What's up, everybody? Welcome to Room and Board. My name is Chris George, and today I wanted to do a review of the game Panorama. Well, actually, I, I don't want to do a review. It's just that the creators are standing off screen holding me hostage with these giant cue cards, forcing me to say everything you're about to hear. Even what I'm saying now is on the cue cards, which I really think defeats the purpose of this whole hostage situation, explicitly telling the audience all of our nefarious deeds. I disagree. I think people value transparency. Stop talking to me via cue card, it's going to get confusing. Sorry, my bad. That's okay, I still love you. It's just one set of handwriting now. Guess they really need to work on their teamwork. And speaking of segues, in Panorama, you work together with the neighbor on your left and the neighbor on your right to build two beautiful panoramas. And then, if that wasn't enough, you'd do it again. <laughs> the person with the highest score of all four panorama combinations is the winner. And that's it. It's a pretty simple game. It plays one to six. It says it takes about 20 minutes, and I would say that's about a lie. I'd say it can take up to 40, maybe 50, depending on the players and the player count. And while the two-player variant is a bit different, which we will get into, the general gameplay is this. Everyone starts with a hand of cards with a variety of pictures on them, and everyone's going to pick one of those cards, put it face down, and then pass their hand to clockwise or counterclockwise, wherever you want to do it, as long as you all pass in the same direction. Then, once everyone's chosen a card, you're going to reveal it in player order, adding it to either one of your panoramas on either side. And if it's the first time you've added a card to this panorama, to this side, it, it will begin the panorama. Now, there are a few considerations to placement. Number one, every panorama has a different height of background. So it'll either be low, medium, or high, and you cannot place a card unless it matches up with that specific height. And if the card that you chose can't match to any of the panoramas, you'll flip it face down, and that'll act as like a wild height for other people to continue on the panorama. Now the downside of being forced to flip a card face down is that you don't get to score its unique scoring criteria. There are animals and features which will give you a variety of points based on a variety of considerations. The moose can't be beside other animals. The bear wants to be beside a tree. The aurora borealis wants to be next to an aurora borealis. Different ways of combining that you want to match up to make your full panorama score as many points as it possibly can. Now for a three plus player game, you're also going to have these goals, which will be awarded to a panorama or multiple panoramas if there's a tie at the end of the game and it'll give them a bunch of points. So you're gonna to wanna to try to grab those as well. And of course, since this game was inspired by natural beauty, AKA Salma Hayek, you first start at dusk and then panorama through dawn. And here's the potential contentious part of this game. You basically play it twice, which I understand because there are different cards that interact with each other depending on the time of day. In dusk, there are moons. In dawn, there are suns. In dusk, you have the aurora borealis. In dawn, you have watchtowers and cliffs. <laughs> no cliffs at night. <laughs> This is fun. I like that there are different things, and I don't really mind that you do it twice, but it does take up a considerable amount of table space, especially at three players where everybody starts with a hand of 12 cards. And since the dusk panoramas have to be left out to potentially score the bonuses because you compare the bonuses to both dusk and dawn panoramas, you can't really score the panoramas in between the game. Because I think if you assign the bonuses twice, that would be a pretty significant point value skew, and I, I don't think you should do that. So it does take up space, and there's no real way to keep track of the score, so you're not going to score it. And the final score isn't even determined until the end of the game where you play through it twice. So it also could be potentially a little bit anticlimactic because you just add up all the points at the end and see who wins. And this also leads into the potential issue, and to be fair, I haven't experienced this personally yet, but I can see where it might happen, of only building the panorama with your favorite neighbor and completely neglecting the other one. Which is fair, it's a strategy. If you think that other person was in the lead because of the first round, then of course you're going to devote more of your attention towards your other partner in the second round. But the problem with that is, because you don't even score them at the beginning, you don't really know who has that commanding lead. And it's not really worth trying to score it to keep track of it. Now, this worry is somewhat mitigated by the fact that if you can play a card on a panorama, you must do so. So if you pick a card and somebody blocks you and you can play that card on somewhere else, you must put it there. You can't flip it down and turn it into a wild, which helps mitigate that because you can get blocked and be forced to play on the other panorama. 
and I haven't really run into it because you're always going to try to do the thing that gets you the most points. There are different combinations and if you can get yourself some points you're going to take that option. But I just think this could have been easily fixed by borrowing the scoring mechanic from between two castles of Mad King Ludwig. That does the exact same thing. You're building two separate things at once but your score at the end is the lowest of the two things. And sure, if you want to play two rounds to make sure that there is always a definitive winner, great. But still, I think if you took the lowest score of both of your panoramas, both times, it would keep everything balanced and it would automatically eliminate this situation from occurring or even being a consideration to occur. Although, even though I've spent so long talking about it, I really do think that it will happen infrequently, so let's move on to some other points, I guess. Because the drafting cards all together and then playing them one at a time also leads to an interesting question. Oftentimes when we were playing, you can often set your partner up to play the next thing. Because you see the hand, you see their panoramas, and you can pass them a hand of cards and make them play the card that's the most beneficial for the two of you. Or set up a combo so that you lay something down and they play its corresponding point modifier. This is really interesting to me, the ability to combo together in this drafting way. But what's also interesting is that you kind of have to hedge your bets as well, because if you pick a card and both of your neighbors have played on either side, or your neighbor plays on the spot where you want it to go, that can just arbitrarily ruin your plans just because of a turn order. So this game for me, it's, it's a bit of a puzzle. I think it might be a game that could greatly benefit from some house rules. Because I can see all of the choices that were made going into the design of it, and I can also see why they work together in the way that they do, but I still want to try out different variations on it because the three plus player experience wasn't as exciting as I was hoping for. It's almost like I want to go through all the iterations that I'm sure happened during the playtests and see which ones I like the best. <laughs> And I'm thinking I feel that way because I like it when you just make your own panorama like you do in the two player variant. Because while I'm, I'm fairly lukewarm on the three plus player count, the two player variant was where I started with and where I have had the most fun. Each player builds just one panorama. Well, okay, two because you build one dusk and one dawn, but you don't have to share it with your neighbors. Instead, at the beginning of the round, you drop three cards and then I get to pick one, you get to pick one, one is left over. Next, you draw three more cards. You get to pick one, I get to pick one. Two is left over. It will slowly build this pool of options and your panorama will slowly increase greater and greater. And you play till everyone's panorama is 10 cards. You do it again. Then you score both panoramas and see who wins. And the best way to describe this experience, which I lost in the three plus player experience, is that it is truly, truly calming. Two player, honestly, top 10 calming games. It is really satisfying to build your own picture in a way that I didn't find that satisfying when I was building it with someone else. Because, oh, look at that, your partner screwed up your move and now you just have to turn your picture over. In the two player, since it's head to head, this is where you're setting yourself up. You're gonna have these turns back to back because it always alternates. And you can hope that the right thing comes up, but the eventual abundance of options in front of you makes it so that it becoming a cutthroat game is not possible. And that in turn makes it this simple, really relaxing experience. My girlfriend really enjoyed this one, definitely more than I did, because she likes a lighter game that allows her the relaxation that living with me certainly cannot provide. But there was something about having that complete control that really resonated with both of us a lot more than just the drafting in a circle did. Now, don't get me wrong, it sounds like I'm very critical of it at a higher player count, more than two players, and I am. I don't necessarily think I will play it again as written, but I probably would play it again with a slight tweak to the scoring, or where everybody just builds their own panorama. You lose out on the combos, but I think this way becomes quicker and more satisfying to just build your own and see your landscape when you're done. I love the art here, I, I really do. It adds to that sort of soothing, abstract nature experience. Some people that I played with wish that there was more variability in the design. They wanted to see different animals, not just a bunch of foxes, but, but I'm, I'm fine with it. I like the little foxes, and I think it would be confusing to add different types of animals that all don't do anything, because the foxes don't score, they're just used to score other things. This one is an interesting one. When all's said and done, uh, the bottom line, I'd have to say, is this. Panorama 
is the definition of a calming experience. The art and concept of assembling your own panorama is relaxing, even if you're still fighting to deny your opponents certain cards. But for me, a lot of the joy of building your own panorama is lost in a three plus player experience. It's still a satisfying experience, but it's not necessarily a strategically dense one. And so this is tough. The two player definitely gets the room and board seal of approval. For three plus players, I'm not so sure yet, but I'm looking forward to trying it with these different variations. But if you're looking for more than two players, I probably wouldn't recommend it at that player count primarily. So bear that in mind if you are interested. But when it all boils down to it, honestly, I'm really glad I was sent a copy. This showed up at my door with no note, Nobody reached out to me ever. They just sent it and it arrived and I thought, wow, okay. <laughs> I don't even know how they got my address. Complete mystery to me. But it is fun enough that I wanted to put a video out there and let you all know about it. For 20 bucks on Amazon, you can do a lot worse and that's what it's currently selling for. And I really think that is the, oh, <laughs> that's your one scoring aid card that they give you for a six player game. But I think this is the right price point for this game. At 20 bucks, I wouldn't be upset having bought it, even with the experiences that I've had. I would just primarily play it at two players or make my own little tweaks to the larger game and not even tell anybody that the rules are different because it won't matter. Nobody needs to know except you and I. <laughs> it's just a quick, simple drafting game that doesn't take itself too seriously and doesn't make you think about your choices all that much. <laughs> So when you want to unwind, it's nice to have a few games like that. And hey, this is going to stick around because my girlfriend really, really enjoyed it at that two player count. She hasn't played it at multiple players. It's definitely one that we'll pull out at night and make a cute little picture, relax, see who wins and move on with the evening. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Now that you know about this game, I certainly didn't know about it until it just showed up. So. <laughs> I did want to make this video though because I, I like it. I do. I really do like it and I can't express how calming that two-player experience really is. Anyway, if you wouldn't mind, leave a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't, helps me out. You won't even remember that you did it. Once again, my name is Chris George. I don't have a catchphrase. I was trying to think of something but I do have a light that dies after 20 minutes of filming. <laughs> anyway, see you in the next one. That was, that was good timing. <laughs> <laughs>